Hi guys, it's Kayla here. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing a book review on a book that I have been wanting to read for a while and I finally read it and I'm so glad I did. It was so good and that book is The Complete Mouse by Art Spiegelman. Oh my god, this book was so good. I gave it five stars, five out of five stars. It was such an easy five out of five stars to give and it was a really interesting journey. I had a very interesting, I love, I love trying new books and new things and kind of discovering and learning new things about myself and maybe my reading habits or opinions or something. And that's kind of what this book did for me. So oh, I was so good. I cannot wait to talk about it. So this is The Complete Mouse by Art Spiegelman. It is a graphic novel. Um, all of the, it's, it's a graphic novel. It looks like a comic, like comic strips. And there's no color. And I don't have a lot of experience reading graphic novels. I've only ever read one. And that one was in color and it was really short. But this was one that I wanted to read for so long. So, and I'm just reading all this. It was a winner of the Pulitzer Prize. Like that seems to be a theme lately is I, I think they've been wanting to read Pulitzers, which is kind of cool. So it was a winner of the Pulitzer Prize and it is gonna stay with me forever. So I'll tell you a little bit about it. So it is, it's an interesting, it's kind of like a two stories woven into one and they run parallel to each other kind of throughout the book. So you have the story of Art Spiegelman and his, he has a wife named, I, I want to say it's Francois, but I could be so wrong. It's like F-R-A-N-C-O-I-S-E uh, and she's French I think. I don't know how to say her name. I'm just going to say Francois could be wrong but he has his wife and then he through like one of the stories is him kind of his relationship with his father Vladik and how it's turbulent but also art is getting Vladik's story his his story of his journey throughout the Holocaust and stuff like that so alongside you know art and Vladik and their relationship we get Vladik's experience his life and through the Holocaust and stuff like that and it is such an amazing book oh my god it was I read it in a day I read it within 24 hours and god it was just amazing not only oh my god I have so many things to talk about which is why I have my notes because I have things to say. <laughs> I took so many notes while I was writing this because whew, there's just so much to talk about. So let's just kind of, I'm just going to start somewhere. Let's see. So one of the interest, one of the interesting things about this book is that is the, is the characters. So largely what I discovered is that the Jewish people are represented as mice in this book and the Germans, the Nazis, but the Germans in general, they're represented as cats. And the Polish or the Poles, they're represented as pigs. And it seems like Americans are represented as dogs or kind of, and then there's like a couple frogs in there. There might be a bunny rabbit in there. So there's other kinds of animals in here, but largely the, the pigs, the mice and the cats are like the three main players throughout this book. So it's really interesting that he turned these characters visually into animals. That's interesting. So so that's kind of where we start. God, this book is amazing. One thing I do wish it would be awesome if this was in color. I'm not sure why it's not. I don't I really don't know that much about graphic novels. I don't know if it's like a normal thing that it's not in color or if it was like a money thing. But also, I wish it was in color just because I love color, but at the same time, it's kind of perfect that it's not in color because it kind of reminds me of Schindler's List and how that movie's in black and white and how the whole black and white thing makes me think of that time period, you know, the 30s and the 40s before color was like a thing with TV and movies and stuff. 
So that's kind of cool. What would have been really cool is if the, the parts where it's like present day and he's talking to his dad and his wife and stuff, if that was in color and then the stuff where Vladek is like back when he's telling his story back in the 30s and 40s, if that was in black and white, I would, I wish he would have done that. But who knows the reason why they did that. But so yeah, it's really cool. Um, one interesting thing that happened to me is that when I first started this, like I said, I don't have experience with graphic novels. So I, it took me a little bit to kind of get into it and kind of find my rhythm because I'm used to reading just words and lines, you know, and it's different when you have, you know, you have these, these different squares, not all the same. Sometimes you have to read this way. Sometimes you read down and then you go over. It just depends on the panel. And so it took me a little bit and I wasn't sure like how long I should be looking at the pictures. Like, should I really be studying them? Is it something I should just give a glance to? I really didn't know like how to read it, but once I started reading it and the story really just wrapped me up in it, I started completely just naturally finding my way. So I, I naturally figured out how to read it, like where to go. Um, and I looked at the pictures when necessary. I didn't have to look at them for like long periods of time, but it was really interesting. And what was also interesting was in the very beginning, first few pages, I was like, I was thinking, I'm like, you know, this is a great story so far and the, the pictures are cool but I don't really need them. That's what I was thinking. I was like, yeah, I'm like, maybe other people really enjoy graphic novels and this is for them. But for me, I was like, I think I just want the story. You know, I, I don't need the pictures. But then the more I read and the deeper I got into this story, the more I realized how, how necessary these pictures were to me and to the story because I don't know what it, I, I still, I still don't know how to wrap my mind around that because I'm not sure why, but it's true. Like I realized that yes, I have my own mind and yes, I can, I can picture lots of things. I could have pictured this, but there's something about having this, having it with this, having the pictures along with the, with the storyline that really added to the story. It really... I don't know and I don't know what it was but I realized that I changed my mind that this actually is something that I wanted that I wanted with the story so thank God for that so one of the things that you first notice right off the bat when you're reading this is that um, and, and I guess from here on out I'm gonna give and there's gonna be spoilers I'm just gonna talk about the book and things that happen so if you don't want to watch and, and get spoiled you know don't want don't watch anymore <laughs> but so one of the first things you notice right off the bat is the strained relationship between art and his dad Vladek they have a very strained relationship so at this point art is a grown man or a grown mouse and he's married and he lives on his own with his wife and he goes to visit his dad and he visits his dad and his dad is married to his stepmom I can't remember what her name is. What is her name? It's like mm, Mala? Yeah, Mala. Oh, sorry. Her name's Mala, and they don't get along either. So Vladek and Mala, are they're not happy together. And Art and Vladek have this very strained relationship. It's very so tension-filled. There's a lot of stress there. And Vladek is, he's a difficult person. Like. It's not hard to, to understand why Art gets so frustrated with him, but it's one of those things, it's one of those relationships that I personally can't relate to. I am lucky enough that my parents are not difficult people. They're very sweet and understanding and amazing people, and I've always gotten along with them. I mean, of course, there have been times where I got frustrated with their decision not to let me do this or that, you know, throughout the years, but. I mean, that's so normal, but other than like actually having to be around my parents, I like being around my parents. I love hanging out with my parents. I love hearing their stories. I love, like, they're my friends at this point. They're just, so I, I really cannot relate. Sorry if you hear my dog. I really cannot relate to this struggle between 
a child and a parent and a difficult parent because the parent is quite difficult but at the same time art is not very he's not very I don't want to say he's not compassionate but he's not as understanding like they both butt heads basically so so that is a significant tension throughout the book and art is a cartoonist he's a comic or something and he wants to tell his dad's story so he starts coming to his dad's house regularly to hear his story write it down and he's he's it's really the it's really the story of how he created this so it's kind of like a memoir it's really cool so so we get that story and then we get Vladek's story and it's such an interesting story and the weird thing is that like Vladek reminds hi guys <laughs> This is me several days later. Um, I'm editing this video and I realized that it cut off. My battery died, I think. So um, I missed a little bit of stuff that I had said. So I'm just gonna kind of insert it here. Um, <laughs> my, so what I was saying is that Vladek reminds me a lot of my own dad. My dad grew up um, as a migrant worker and he grew up really, really poor. He grew up in a really big family. He grew up super poor. He was working in the fields, um, picking, you know, fruit and, and vegetables and stuff like that um, since he was like five years old. So my dad had a really rough childhood. He um, came from a very, like, loving siblings and parents and, you know, but they struggled with money, with food, and my dad a lot of times he had nothing you know and he he knows what it's like to go hungry and so my dad has these quirks that are kind of symptoms of his childhood and in many ways this reminds me of Vladek and how Vladek is the way he is because of the things that he's been through so I just wanted to insert that here. <laughs> so now my dad has these quirks where like, it's really hard for him to give things away. It's hard for him to throw things away. Um, when he acquires things, he tries to find uses for them and recycle and stuff like that. It's really hard for him to throw things away. And that also goes with food. He doesn't like to waste food. He will eat all leftovers and he, I mean, there were times growing up where we would throw away things and in our trash, and my dad always took care of the trash. He would go around the house, he would take out the trash and, you know, put it out in the, in the big bin and everything. And he would take things out, whether it be like a, you know, a torn tennis shoe, or sometimes I would throw out just, just things that were kind of broken, a little wooden box and maybe one of the hinges is broken off, you know, and I throw it away. It's not much, you know, it's not worth much, but he'll take them out and he'll try and fix them or he'll put them aside and, and stuff like that. And, and those little things are symptoms and side effects of having nothing for a long time and for going hungry and stuff like that. And so I always knew that growing up and and, and in many ways, Vladek is like that too. Vladek is extreme though. He's very rude about it too. He's very, uh, save, he like saves everything and doesn't like to waste anything. And it makes everybody crazy around him. But he's also an insane penny pincher, like insane. Uh, it, uh, he's very difficult, but it's understandable considering what he's been with, what he's been through. So. So there's that kind of parallel. So this story was, it was different. It, it added really more so sad stories to the Holocaust and what happened during the Holocaust. And this story was just so sad, you know? you It's very similar to many other stories where you have a family, and, and this was a very well-to-do family. Uh, they were well off. Uh, Vladek had just married the love of his life, which is Art's mother. And her name was, what was her name? Oh my god, why am I forgetting everybody's name? An Anja. It's A-N-J-A. And it's probably, you can probably say Anna, but I want to say Anja. Like, I feel like that's how they'd say it. <laughs> 
but that's his wife and that's Art's mother and you find out very early in the book that that Anha, which is Art's mother and Vladek's wife, she kills herself. She killed herself in 1968 when when Art was like 20. I think he was 20 years old and so it's really sad and and so we go throughout the story you know you have Vladek, he married Anka. They had a little boy named R Richiv, Richiv, R I C H I E V, or something like that. And um, that was their son. And they went through it all, you know, the beginnings where things were slowly happening, where the propaganda was starting to come out, you know, they were starting to, they were starting to to take businesses away from Jewish people. And then they started like displacing them you know moving them into ghettos and then they start you know, like just that slow process of destroying them and then it's just so sad there's so many sad little anecdotes that happen in here and um, eventually Vladek and his wife Anja they end up in Auschwitz and it's about their story they survive the war though they survive it in the end but it's really only them two and I think like an uncle and a cousin everybody else dies was murdered and including their little son and so that's Art's older brother that he never met Art was born later after the war and then they moved to America and that's where this you know the, the current place current time takes place and there's so many little anecdotes in here that just break your heart and and the sad thing is, is like, even though this is colorful, even though it's like a comic, right? And there's mice and cats and stuff. I know that this is true. This is a true story. This is a memoir of, uh, of his dad's life and what they went through. And so a lot of this stuff is so sad. And it's kind of interesting to me that he chose to use the animals to depict the people. I'm not entirely sure why he did that, but he did do it very carefully, which is really interesting. He did, he was really thinking about it and trying to figure out like who should be who and what kind of people should represent what kind of people. And I'm not sure why he did it because part of me feels like, part of me feels like turning the people into animals makes it feel a little like like you're distancing yourself from the reality of it you're kind of I don't know because when I think of animal characters I kind of think of like children's books you know just kind of like a more a more child friendly vibe and so to have this topic that is not pulling any punches you know it tells you brutal brutal stuff in the form of cats and dogs and mice and pigs it's weird it has a weird effect to me it feels like it's a di I feel like it's like a distancing you're kind of he's distancing he's dis I don't know it's so hard to, to describe but I don't necessarily know if it's that good of a thing but then I think like I try to picture like if he had drawn people and oh my god it would have been so much harder to read it would have been so much harder to read it would have been really devastating so maybe him making them animals makes it an easier pill to swallow because no matter what this is really hard stuff this is really hard you know material to to digest it is hard it makes you cry it makes you sad it makes you just I mean it's hard stuff and it's true stuff and and maybe he did it so that it could make it more accessible you know maybe it was to to view it through another lens you know like if you if you don't look at it as people if you see it kind of objectively maybe more people would see clearly how wrong this was I don't know I'm not really sure what was his motives for that but in many ways I'm glad he did it. I think it was kind of genius the way he did it and how he chose the animals and stuff. It was genius in many ways. 
but part of me feels like it might not necessarily have been a totally great thing. It really does feel like a kind of distancing from the truth and from the reality and kind of, I don't know, not buttering it up to make it better, but I don't know. I, I, it's one of those things that it, I really would have to think more on it, but it's definitely interesting and I, I, I want to do more research on it and kind of understand why he did that. But yeah, so that was really interesting. Another thing that this book re really made me realize, because there's so many aspects to the Holocaust, and one of the things that is very big in the Holocaust is that is that the older people, the sick, and the children were the ones that were killed first and the quickest. And that was always horrible. Like, obviously, that's really horrible. But this book, I don't know what it was about it, but it really made me realize, like, yes, I knew all of that, but to really let it sink in, like, it really made me realize how truly precious every life is. Like, before, you know, you would understand, or not understand, but you would, you, you would hear the Nazis' rationale concerning that, like, oh, old people, sick people, and children, they're too weak, or they can't work, and so they're useless, you know, and now obviously that's insane, but you can, like, you can understand the rationale. I, it's not okay at all, but it's like I can, I don't know, like, they're just, the, the Nazis were so pragmatic and practical, and that's so something that they would do, right? But this book really made me realize, like, how truly evil that was and how really precious every life is. Like, just because somebody is 87 years old doesn't mean that they, their life is worth less than anyone else's. And it's so true because, I don't know, you just see older people in this, in this story and they're sweet and kind and good people and they're part of a family, they're part of a community. They, they have so much to give to the world. And not just that, but they have a right to their own lives. But for them to be taken away, to be lesser than, it's just, it really made me realize, I don't know what it was, but it's very eye-opening, like, how truly important every life is. The old, the young, the sick, the handicapped, I mean, it's just insane. That was kind of a cool thing that it made me realize. Another thing, which was so interesting. Okay, I gotta go to the page, page 188. So there's this thing that happens in the book where this is the first time I've ever encountered this and all the times I've ever studied the Holocaust is that the tattooing of the number on the arm, it became something beautiful in this book. And I've never experienced that before. It was always, I mean, it's a terrible thing. You're tattooing human beings like they're property, like they're animals. So fucking evil. It's so demeaning, right? And, and the tattoo is always a very, I don't know, it's like the Jewish star they had to wear. You know, it's this physical, outward symbol of who they were and who, how they were treated. It was awful. But this book made it a beautiful thing and I'll show you. This was amazing to me. So this was on page 188. So um so Vladik had just gotten to Auschwitz and he was separated from his wife Anha so he's all alone. And I'm just gonna read you this little bit. Um maybe I'll I'll just kind of do it this way. Okay so it says we newcomers were put inside a room. Old timers passed and said all the same. You see those chimneys? Okay, so I was more sad. I was worn and shivering and crying a little. Nobody even looked. But from another room, someone approached over. Why are you crying, my son? Should I be happy? Am I at a carnival? And this man goes, let me see your arm. And then Vladik realizes that he's a priest. 
and he says, hmm, your number starts with 17. In Hebrew, that's kminyan tov. 17 is a very good omen. He wasn't Jewish, but very intelligent. And then he goes on to say, it ends with 13. The age a Jewish boy becomes a man. And you see his number. And look, added together, it totals 18. That's chai, chai or chai or something like that. The Hebrew number of life. I can't know if I'll survive this hell, but I'm certain you'll come through all of this alive. Vladik, he says, I started to believe. I tell you, he put another life in me. And whenever it was very, very bad, I looked and said, yes, the priest was right. It totals 18. He says, that guy was a saint, and I never saw him again. So that was this moment that was just so beautiful that Vladik was so alone, so scared. He had just gotten tattooed. I mean, the worst thing had happened. And he's sitting there all alone, terrified. And this priest comes over to him and makes him feel better and shows him on his arm all of these beautiful things about the numbers that he got and it was like like an omen and a beacon of hope and it was just so beautiful and it really helped Vladik because whenever things got super hard he would look at his number and he would re remember all those things that he had said and it, it gave him strength and like that was the first time ever that I've ever encountered a story where the number, the tattooing of the number became something beautiful. And I was so, it was, it was wonderful. I never expected that in a million years to ever happen, but it was beautiful. It was a beautiful moment. So I loved that. Oh, another crazy thing. While Vladek was in Auschwitz, he went in front of Dr. Mengele twice. If you don't know who Dr. Mengele is, I will link like a documentary in the, in the description below because Dr. Mengele was this awful doctor that worked at Auschwitz. He's a horrible person. And he came, he went in front of him because like Dr. Mengele would like look at people and decide whether they would go left or right, wait, left or right. <laughs> and that meant like if they were, they're going to die or if they were going to live. And so, you know, during this time, Vladik wants to appear healthy and strong. And so he had to go in front of Mengele twice. And this man's fate was in Mengele's hands. And oh, I hate Mengele. But yeah, it was crazy that he had he had met my Mengele. Totally crazy. So there were other some crazy things that happened in here. One thing that was really interesting was that this book brought up the fact that because Art Art Spiegelman, he struggles a lot with his father's story. So throughout the years, he's listening to the story, writing it down, drawing, and then when it became a success. He really struggled with it because he personally didn't go through that stuff. And he had these very existential crises, crises when he would realize, like, how do, I, how do I write this? How can I write this? I wasn't even there. How could I possibly draw Auschwitz? How could I possibly write my father's story? I have no idea. And there was this kind of, like, guilt almost that he didn't experience the horrors that his parents did. So it was really hard for him to to draw things and write things. It, it was something he definitely struggled with. And and then when it became a success, because this this was in two parts. I think he like released the first part and then the second part. So like it was a real big success. And there was a part in the second part where he's kind of talking about his success with this. And, and the drawings are just so sad because you see art, it's so sad. He's, where, why can't I find this? Oh, they're here. So this is art and he's like sitting at like a table that you would draw your cartoons and stuff. And there's this pile of dead mice, like the piles that were of the dead bodies at, at the concentration camps. And he felt so depressed and so guilty that his story was such a success and he was getting all these interviews and, you know, deals and all kinds of great things. 
for this horrible story. It almost made him feel like he was exploiting what had happened to these people because of his story. It was so sad. It was a tough thing for him to really grapple with and I thought that was so sad but it was really interesting and it's true. I mean how can you, you want to tell the story, you want it to reach everybody but then when it does become a success and then the normal things that happen when things become a success, the popularity, the the celebrity, the the all that stuff that comes with it, it starts to demean the meaning and it starts to make you feel like like you're using that topic and that wasn't the purpose like he wanted he just wanted the story out it made him crazy that this made him famous and I can understand that I mean how sad you know so that was something he definitely struggled with and it was completely understandable the other thing oh my god so this book had so many quotes in it that were just really poignant so as I was saying so art struggles okay art struggles a lot with his father with the situation with the story everything his mom committing suicide I mean it was just he struggled and he's telling the story of a survivor you know a survivor of the Holocaust and it's interesting because this book makes you realize that not only is this about a survivor surviving the Holocaust but it's also about the children that the, the next generation that survives the survivors because the survivors come back so different they're so affected traumatized broken in so many ways that the next generation it's just insane you know like and it was one thing I never realized like oh my gosh they had to survive the survivors that was a huge thing in this book and then another thing too was I think I think at one point Art was talking to his wife and talking about his dad and he was saying like I can't believe my dad survived this you know like it's crazy that he actually survived this and I think she says at one point like but in many ways he didn't survive and that was the first time I ever thought of it that way like these Holocaust survivors like even if they physically survived there's so much that they did not survive. The murder of their entire families and friends and everybody they knew and loved. They, they, their homes were taken from them. The, they were hungry and dirty and sick and reduced to... They were reduced to parts of themselves that they didn't want to be. Because one thing I noticed too obviously in Auschwitz is that people became really mean when things get so bad and when you're starving and when you're all alone and you're on the brink of death and it's all about survival humanity kind of goes out the window and that's probably one of the saddest things about the Holocaust is that it reduces humans into non-humans you start fending solely for yourself you start doing things that you never would have done in, in the real world such as not sharing your bread you know um, there were times where people would would steal each other's breads would rat other people out because it would guarantee them an extra bowl of soup you know like the craziest things they they became very cruel to one another and mostly just for survival and it made them so feel so bad and it's just awful it so pisses me off that they did this so it reduces people to our basis our basis instincts which is just so sad and oh my god one thing that made me crazy about this book oh my god so oh at one point in this story I mean this whole story is about the Holocaust and how a group of people were hating on another group of people because of who they look, what they look like, their religion, their nationality, whatever you want to call it. It was racism, it was prejudice, it was wrong in every way. Like, it was ridiculous, right? There's a part in this book where, at the very end, where in real life, like, not in real life, but in real time, like present time, the uh, Art and his wife, they pick up a hitchhiker and it's a black guy. And Art, or not Art, Vladek freaks out. He starts talking in Polish or Yiddish or some language and he he's just 
going on like how can you invite this and he's he calls the black man some kind of name I don't know what it means and he's like how can you let him in here you know he's gonna steal my things and this and that I would never let this person in my car and all this stuff and it's just incredible right so then they take the guy where they want to and they drop him off and Art gets so mad at his dad like how can you be like this how can you be so racist and hypocritical when you're you're acting towards this man the way like the Germans acted towards you how can you how and that made me so crazy it pissed me off so much I mean this is this is probably a true story like there's a lot of things in here that that paint Art's father in not a great light, right? It's the truth. It's reality. It's ugly. But it's truth. And it made me so crazy because I'm thinking like, like, what does that mean? You know? Like, what does that mean? How can he have gone through what he went through and yet do the exact same, that same kind of mentality towards another group of people? It blew my mind and and it's I mean it's not like it's something new I see and hear this a lot there's a lot of people out here that are racist towards all kinds of random people for all kinds of random reasons and it's just crazy to me like I don't get it I really don't and he didn't either and it's very hypocritical and I don't I mean it didn't really say much after that but it just kind of showed like oh that made me crazy that made me so crazy oh my god but overall, I mean, this book had so many, so many sad things that it said. Like, like the drawings, there was no accidents in them. Like there was one point where you see the mice and they're walking on sidewalk and the sidewalk is shaped like a swastika, but very subtly. And I'm like, mm, that wasn't, that was not an accident. <laughs> Another interesting thing. So like in real life, the Jewish, if Jewish people could pass as other races, they would, you know, they dye their hair blonde and all whatever they could do. And he, he does that in the book by masks. So when, at one point when Vladek and Ancha are out in the world pretending not to be Jewish, they have these in, in the drawings, they have these masks, like it looks like a pig mask with a little string tied in the back. And that's what they wear to kind of like blend in. It's really, it's fascinating that he did that. Oh, and this one thing. Um, so when I was saying that Art was really struggling with the whole, am I good enough to even write this story? He, he's, he feels a survivor's guilt. You know, it, it's crazy. At one point he's talking to his um, a therapist and his therapist was also in the Holocaust. He went through a camp and everything like that. And they're talking about it and he says like like he almost art almost puts his dad surviving on a pedestal like the fact that his dad survived and his mom survived that no like that that was such an accomplishment and such an uh, amazing thing that hap that he did in his life that nothing art could ever do in his entire life could ever measure up to that so in many ways he always felt inadequate and he always felt like no matter what he could never be as good and never do anything as good as or as amazing as his dad surviving if that makes sense. And he's telling this to his therapist and his therapist goes, so you think it's admirable to survive? And he's like, yes it is. He's like, well then do you, does that mean that it's not admirable not to survive? And he was like, no, like, of course not. And he, and he, he made him realize, like, you need to understand that the Holocaust and, and the people who survived it, it was all random. It was all random. There wasn't, it's not like the best people survived, you know, the, the best, the smartest, the most deserving. That's not what happened. And it wasn't like the worst people survived either. It was, it was random. There was no rhyme or reason to it. There was no logic to it. No matter what you did, there wasn't a one thing you could do that would guarantee that you would survive the Holocaust. That did not exist. It was random. It was luck. It was, it was luck. It was perfect timing. Because I can't tell you how many times throughout this book, moments that were so lucky 
that he, he survived because it easily could have gone the other way and it did for many people. Many people, no matter what they did, they were killed, they were murdered. And it made Art realize that like his dad is not some superhero, some, you know, larger than life figure that he could never measure up to. I mean, yes, it's amazing that he survived. It is. And, a, and he was very smart in many ways and he definitely helped himself survive. But the larger picture is that it was random, you, you know, and it, and it kind of takes away that guilt and it helps with survivor's guilt too, to know that you were just one of the lucky ones, you know, and that was so eye opening to me. I mean, it's, it's so true that the Holocaust was so random in so many ways, which is makes it horrible. Oh my god. This book was so good. I can't even. Okay, there's a few more things I wanted to talk about if I can find my own. Habits that were created during the Holocaust were like scars. They never went away. Um, like how Vladik saved everything. He even reused a tea bag from, from breakfast. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much it. I mean, read this book, please. It is so good. It's, it's a very easy read. It's very fast. It's really hard to read. It is completely deserving of the five stars because not only of just the story from the Holocaust, but Art's story as well. His story between him and his father, the struggle, his struggle with having parents that survived the Holocaust, a mother who, who killed herself, a brother he never met. You know, like there's so many things that he went through and he struggled with and it's amazing it's a beautiful story in many ways it's, it's a true story and it has a lot to say and I really I loved it so much uh, it's definitely a book I'm gonna keep I'm gonna re recommend it to everybody and I'm probably I'm gonna reread it it's added to my Holocaust collection now and I highly recommend it to everybody because again if you've never really read anything about the Holocaust you read this not only is it easy to read it really gives you a really good idea of what happened to a lot of people. So that was The Complete Mouse by Art Spiegelman. And I loved it so much. So I really hope you love it too. So yeah, if you've read that book, please tell me all about it, what you think, how you felt, if you liked it, all that stuff. Because I just, I still don't even know. There's still things about the book that I just, I still need to like stew on and ruminate. But anyways. So yeah, I hope you like this video. If you did, like and subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.